In this video, we're going to focus on how we can change the color palette here. For example, here we are on default, and then we click on this. And then you eventually have here the neon. And of course, we can go back to default like that. You might notice the borders are not done here, which is correct because I didn't fine tune that one. However, once you understand how to change colors like this, you will also understand how you can fine tune it with borders and going very advanced. So let's start to explore how we can play around with these radio buttons where we can change the color palette. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewer's question, which is how to change the color palette with the radio button in Chart.js. And this question came from one of my other videos about how to create a step bar chart with line chart in Chart.js. And if you scroll down here, you'll see this question came from Megan Fleming. So special thank you to Megan for asking the question. And this is what Megan asked. Please, can you create a video on using a radio button to change the chart colors with a one radio button being for one set of colors and another one for being a different set of colors so basically we're going to change with color palettes all right so let's start and play around with that for that what we do need to do is first is to get our default code which you can find on chart yes uh, 3.com getting started just make sure you get this link and you can find it also in the description so we scroll down here and going to copy all of this chunk of code. Once you have this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video that explains the JavaScript of it. So I'm going to paste this in here. Once I did that, what I want to do, of course, is to get this here, put it in there, save that, refresh. All right, so now we have here our bar chart. And what I want to do here now is start to work with radio buttons. So we're going to create some radio buttons here. In this case, I'll just create two basic radio buttons. So I'm going to say input type equals radio. And then here we will say a value. And this value would be, let's say, default, the default palette. And then we have here value. All right, so we have this. And then we have here the name. Let's say here colors. So then what I want to do here is I'll just type in a default as our label text once i put in there we're going to put in another one which will be not our default but in this case this will be let's say here i'm going to get a neon a color pattern or palette so i'm just going to say here neon as well so if i save this now refresh there we are so we have this and we make sure that you can select one or the other so this is working what I want to do here now is just I'm just going to colorhunt.co. You can get any website you want wherever you get the color. And I just see here all these neon colors. And let's grab this one here. It has 2,800 likes. Beautiful. So I'm going to grab this. And this will be my color for the palette, which will be if we would select here the neon color. And else, if we select the default, we get again back the original color. So I'm going to grab this chunk of code here. You can use the RGB or you can use the hex codes. In this case, RGB would be more practical for me. So I'm going to grab this here. I'm just going to put this up here and later on we have to work with that. So what we need to do is the following. Uh, let's see. First of all, we have to create here a function that we have on select. The moment we select a certain value, it will eventually start to do something. Or basically not even on select, it should be on change. The moment it changes, it should trigger something so we can say here uh, on change and if you have on change we want to change palette all right so i'm just going to call it like that this me will be my function and i'm going to grab the value of this this refers to the entire input we're later on in javascript we can work around with that and select the specific value here which would be the default so we're going to grab this here put this in here as well so now we are done with that all right so i'm going to cut this out and what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll down here at the bottom and just put in some extra enter so we have some space and then in here i'm going to create a function and this function is called the color palette the color palette so we have now the color palette but i just have to confirm we had here change palette so i guess that should be identical here all right so now we have this here so what I want to do here is I'll just say here this palette, all right? And this palette here is, of course, a reference to the value of this here. So basically, the item here describes this, and this refers to the entire input here. So if you want to understand what's going on here, all we can do here is do a console log and just say, please 
show me what the palette does. So if I save this now and remember we have created here on change so it should function now correctly. So if I open up my developer tab and I select a value we can grab here all the items here. Of course I don't want everything. All I want is to get the specific value because everything else here is not necessary for, for me or for our, our function. So I'm going to say a dot value if I save this and then what I'm going to select here is neon and default. All right so now we have this. So what I'm going to do here now is just create a function and this function is based on the following. First of all before we even do the function we must have what we call our colors. So I'm going to say here let and I'm going to specifically use let and you need to use let as well. Normally you might say constant but now we, we cannot do this. Why? I'll be using and referring to this variable uh, twice. So that's why this is not allowed to be different. But what I will do is I will basically use here, I will give it a existence but it has an undefined value. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to use a function here now or an if function or basically an if statement and in this if statement we're going to assign the colors if we have a certain value match. So for example in our case if you're getting the default so let's say here if uh, we can just say maybe a color palette dot value equals strict. Let's see if this works. Maybe it doesn't work with equals strict. In that case, we should do only equal. So let's see, equals strict is preferred because it's faster compared to equal. However, let's see if it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not depending on the item. Usually with select buttons, it doesn't work well. Anyway, so we're going to say this. We're going to say here if the value equals strict default in that case I want to grab here the background colors here I'm just going to grab all of this copy that and I'll say here in that case colors which we have named already above will be equal to whatever we have here this beautiful array here with our default values so let's put them nicely here and there we are and finally here all right so then we have this here. Uh, make sure we remove that one here and semicolon. So we have here it is, semicolon. So if that is the case, what I want to do is another if statement here. And this if statement will be basically if it's neon. In that case, well, I realized that I deleted these items here. So I need to grab these values again. So I'm going to copy all of these. In that case, I'm going to put this in here. So I'm going to put that in there. All right. Then we're going to say here, single quotations, comma, we, may, we have to make this an array, single quotation, comma, single quotation, and of course here, comma, single quotation, and make sure that afterwards, this is all nicely matching here in one line. All right, so we have this here. So what is very nice in charges, automatically, even if you have more variables or more uh, items, in the chart like here it will just loop through these and will follow the sequence again back from the start you'll see later on how it works so now we have this here now i want to do here is the following i want to update the item so let me just before we even do something i'll just do a console log let's grab the colors it should now work nicely so if i refresh here and select this all right this works you can see if it's default we get this one and if it's on neon we will get only one with four arrays Beautiful. All right, so if you want to really confirm this, you can do a table here, which will make it a bit more organized. So I like this a lot. There we are. So this works beautiful. So now what we need to do is we need to update basically the chart with the latest data and then or these with the new colors and override whatever we have in here. So to do this, we're going to use here the my chart, which is the reference of this specific item here, my chart, and we say my chart dot. So what we're going to do is we're going to do config and from config we go to data and from data we go to data sets zero because this is index zero the first element is always index zero because an array is zero based calculation or zero based counting so then we have this uh, not data sorry but then we have here the background color all right so let's follow along here so config dot data dot data sets zero then here dot, well let's go back here, so we are here, we are in the data, and then from data set zero, we're going to grab here the background color. Then we have this here, 
Once we have this, we say equal to whatever the colors are. So now we have this here, and then what we want to do finally is mychart.update. Once we update that, we save this. Semicolon here as well. Save that. Refresh. And now if I select this, you can see here now we get this neon effect here. And then you can see here we still have these colors here, but that's all right. We can even change that if we want to, but it doesn't matter so much. But basically, if you would like to change it, we can do it in here. And probably you need to have here then a separate color for the background color and border color because the border color is solid while the background color has a alpha value of 0 0.2 in this case here. So it doesn't matter so much. I will not spend time on that, but I'll just say here border color just to make sure you understand the differences here. So we have this here and if I select this, of course now what happens is the background color here changes. So you have to fine tune that of course. But this is basically how you can change with color palettes and it works beautiful as well and this all everything changes here nicely and that's basically how you can do it so if you enjoyed this video i have another video that might be of interest of you is regarding this where we can create an animation background color here where the things are starting to change and rotate as well which could be a very interesting part of a color palette as well